If you were raised properly like me, you'll know to always clean out your plates. That way, you don't leave any waste. Well, the problem with that reasoning is that if you've been in a kitchen lately, you'll have noticed that cooking creates a lot of waste as well. From eggshells to carrot peels, all of that has to go somewhere, and if you're lucky enough to have a compost, good for you. But that's not the case for most restaurants or individuals living in Hong Kong. That is, until now. This is TechAsia, and let's get recycling. If you got a, like, a bag of garbage, you put it out the door, it gets collected on a daily basis. So for typical citizen, it's out of sight and it's out of mind. So you put it back out and it just disappears. What's the point of recycling this kind of food waste? Can it not just go to the regular bin? Ah, well, of course. You can put in a bin, I believe there are certain uh, issues. Uh, one is if you leave it there, especially in summer, it could attract pets rats and other things, we don't want them to be around our surrounding area. When you look from a sustainability angle, 30% of our waste is food waste. And when it actually get dumped in a landfill, it decomposes and turns into methane. And methane is 21 times more intensive in terms of greenhouse emission compared with salt carbon dioxide. That's an issue, especially given that most landfills around the world are close to being full. If we do not separate food waste, we are contributing um, to the severe weather we have right now. Maybe not many people are aware that in Hong Kong every day, more than 3,000 tons of the food waste are generated from the whole Hong Kong city. So that has represents a substantial impact to the, to the people, but also to the to Hong Kong government, how, you know, how to manage better on this waste. How indeed. It seems that the smart people at the HKPC have found a solution. What we have here is a process that will basically liquefy the food waste to facilitate for further recycling. The Food Transmatter is the first ever technology to liquefy the food waste from solid to, to the liquid. Mm. Not only in Hong Kong, but across the world. Uh, compared with the others, for example, the conventional digestion uh, process, uh, it may demand very long cycle time and much bigger space, but also cannot resolve uh, the hygiene and uh, auto issue. So uh, that is the, the main purposes that when we develop this uh, technology, you know, to handle that problems. Yeah. We still have quite a lot of um, food factory in Hong Kong, like factory making soup, factory making dim sum. Um, for all these uh, factories, they do have fractions of rejects or they have got the fruit, food residue. Um, that they will throw away, but it's actually very good for our machine. We can separate the bone, you know, um, and all the meat and everything else will be digested and turned into liquid, mm. which can be further uh, convert into bioenergy in the government facility. If we convert the food waste into biogas, for one ton of food waste, it could actually power one family for the whole month. We've talked to the people who designed the system, but. How about we go and talk to people who actually use it every day? Hai San Place has a food court and lots of restaurants which actually use that transmarter system. Right. Okay, so we're here underground, close to these uh, big kind of intimidating machines. Um, we collect our food waste here in this um, uh, waste center. We have them all stored in this waste bin and mm -hmm. they put it on this uh, machine here. It's well fit, right? And then it will get pulled up into um, this processing bit of the machine mm. here. Within the Lee Gardens area, we have uh, nine buildings here. We have food and beverages, restaurants and eateries. So we do have uh, generate a significant amount of food waste. Okay, typically when we have food waste here, we keep it in the refuge center. Because of the nature of food waste, we cannot keep it for, for too long. Mm. They have to be taken care of immediately, pretty much. Um, if we could store it for a little bit uh, longer uh, with less space, that would help. Mm. And so this is machine is supposedly helping us, you know, on that um, aspect. Mm. So it treats the food waste and then it turns into slurry, which can be kept, refrigerated, and for, for example, like a week is good enough. Mm. And then we can have it uh, sent to the old park for mm. treatment. 
I think space is definitely another uh, issue uh, because you look at this, right? It's kind of tall, it's kind of big. Um, if you look at the general uh, waste bin, it's like this, this tall, right? Yet, no, we cannot stack them up, but we need more spaces. So this is potentially taking up smaller spaces, but uh, with a machine that can be tailored to the needs of each building, um, that kind of help us. Because there's some big blades, it, it feels like it should, it's a little bit of a dangerous machine, right? It you could to... be, it could be. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a, it appears to be dangerous, you know, to people maybe like you, but actually it's quite safe. Because there's like high security and mm. make sure that people don't get hurt. You see all these light cages, we'll make sure that it's safe. We want to make sure that we avoid any potential accidents. So, for example, the, the door has to be closed for it to operate. Absolutely, so people don't get in accidentally. Yeah, right. That yeah. makes sense. And so once once the food has been sent into this uh, into this machine, it gets crushed right right around here. Crushed. Right? It got. Um, it has a sieve. It kind of like um, segregate out all the I don't know um, fork, big huge bones just in case. We we advise our tenants not to put in any of those, mm. but they have like a, a sieve to to block out all those like impurities per se. So and then they go through this process um, and turn it into you know slurry. Turning it up, the thing, you can hear it right now. So it's doing the process. And then once it's turned to the slurry, it gets over to the pipe work and go to that big um, mm. storage over okay. there. So that's, that's actually uh, storage? Of the slurry. You see the pipe work here, it gets connected. And then from the back end there, it gets all piped in here. Right. So it's all here. It's very enclosed, it's an enclosed system. So that's why no smell. Mm. And um, on a weekly basis, the truck comes in and they just you know, they hose up like at the bottom absolutely. or at, at the, the bottom, at, at the bottom, right, right here. Okay. Anything, we are anything. doing pretreatment right here. So supposedly, um, if you just um, treat the norm, treat the food waste normally, you truck the whole, you know, all the food waste directly to Old Park. Mm. Then it takes time for them to turn them into, mm. you know, for processing as well. So this process supposedly to help shorten that period mm. as well. So um, yeah, I think that is. Um, so far, it's like a win-win. We we can yeah. see that you know it's. So you're saying it's refrigerated. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kept very it gets tight. quite warm during the summer. Yes, absolutely. So we have yet to wait and see what summer is like. Yeah. Let us show you a demonstration. And so this this is opening up. Obviously, it's it's closed to help the smell keep oh, inside, definitely. right? Oh, definitely. You can smell nothing here right yeah. now. One of the best part of it is that it contains a smell really well mm. and um, and that's why it's, it's good enough for us to keep it for days as well for the treated. Uh, a lot of people think food waste dirty. I don't want to touch it. You know, I just want to throw it in the bin and forget about it. You know, um, it does involve certain kind of a separation process. I mean, people are used to separate the paper, uh, the plastic and the metal, but people still concern about the hygiene of food waste. Mm. According to the United Nations, a third of the food we produce is wasted. Certainly, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, certainly, there's some that we cannot avoid. For example, drinks a few, whether you know the harvesting is not good, or some of them they are damaged during transportation, and some of the food is expired. Food waste cannot be eliminated 100%, but there's obviously uh, there's a lot of ways we can do to minimize it. Because mm. for for restaurants and. The food that the waste that's generated is not just from people leaving food in their plates or something no, like that. No, it's all pre-processing mm. and you know um, the carrot's so, head or whatever. Keep... While they're preparing the food, they do have food waste there as well. But so in that case, it's a little bit more work for a restaurant owner to like yeah. separate it out and and do do all this work. Yeah, but it's more like a practice, you know. Mm. Um, as long as you have that in place, we have been doing that for a while now. So of course, at the beginning, people, you know, get, oh, why is it so much work, additional work? But it's actually, in fact, you know, it's yeah. just one second more. Yeah, no, so it's not actually for work, it's just changing people's Absolutely. mindset. Absolutely. Just like our offices, we didn't have that food waste collection before, but mm. now we have a little uh, bucket set up as well, mm. so that we encourage our colleagues to do the same. So people do find it strange at the beginning, but I think people is, you know, getting used to it and knowing that, um, you know, waste is something that we have to take care of, mm. and food waste is something that we can definitely do some easy steps to um, minimize it, mm. right? 
Hong Kong is not the only place we are looking for. Actually, we are working with our partners to look into the other places. For example, the, the GBA, the Great Bay Area, uh, you know, Singapore, Thailand or Korea that who has the similar, uh, you know, uh, similar uh, situation like Hong Kong with the high uh, density of a population, right? So in the in the city, I have a confidence that the gradually this technology will be able to serve more people like private buildings, you know, private owners, so that this can also help them to reduce the, the let's say the burden of the waste generated from the daily operations. I'm afraid that's all the recycling we'll have for you in this week's Tech Asia. If you want more recycled content, well, you can check out our bag catalog. In the meantime, make sure you leave us a comment on the video and let us know how you feel about recycling. Till then, I guess you'll just have to take care.